Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Brigadier General Murray Holt, the Assistant Adi Adjutant General, Army, and Command Sergeant Major Chad Moneypenny, the State Command Sergeant Major, West Virginia Army National Guard, welcome to our retirement ceremony. Today, we have gathered to honor the departure of our retiring soldiers as well as, as, well as their families. We also want to extend a sincere welcome to our distinguished guests. Ladies and gentlemen, Please rise for the playing of the national anthem and remain standing for the invocation delivered by Chaplain Butler. Uh, 
their, uh, their efforts uh, to help in this celebration, as well as the G1 shop, uh, Sergeant Major Miller and uh, Chief Huffman for your efforts uh, to help make this a, a, a great event. We are blessed as a nation to have an all-volunteer military. We have no draft or conscription service. We depend on men and women to make a conscious decision to serve their nation through military and civilian service. Service can span a few years or decades. Today we celebrate the service of the ones who displayed an exceptional commitment to this country. What was it that caused you to join? Uh, was it uh, service to your nation? Was it the benefits? Um, was it something that was deep inside each and every one of you that made you want to be part of something bigger than yourself? That is, um, is what this nation has depended on for over 245 years uh, and existed since the first militia was ever formed in Massachusetts in, in 1636 to protect the founding colonies. Over the years, there have been many changes, and you have experienced many of those changes, from uniforms, uh, just as, uh, as you see here today, uh, as well as training methods, and how we deploy and fight you have and will always be a part of this great army. When you entered the army, there were NCOs who initially tore you down and built you back to be the soldier that you are today. Through training and experience, you became leaders responsible for the training and the mentoring of future leaders. Those soldiers trusted you and depended on you for your leadership and your mentorship to prepare them to perform in combat theaters as well as domestic operations and to develop them as future leaders. That is truly your legacy. Lastly and certainly not least, I want to recognize your families from, from the parents who raised you and instilled values that caused you to want to join the army to your spouses who have not fully who may not have fully understood what they were signing up for and for the children who never who never got a vote in what was next in terms of your career and what next assignment you might have uh, we owe you a debt of gratitude for supporting your service member. To the children and the count, the, for the countless missed birthdays, holidays, sport events, um, concerts, you are the reason we do this. And while we may use the term resilient too often, I can think of no better term to describe what you are, and we thank you. To the spouses for the times too numerous to count when you held down the fort at home, uh, going to soccer games, football games, attending parent-teacher conferences, running FRG meetings, taking care of our West Virginia National Guard families, and making trips to the emergency room at 2 in the morning all alone. You are truly the strength of the force. And without, without your support and sacrifice, we would not be here today. And we owe you a huge debt of gratitude that we can never repay. So if you would all, please, please stand with me and join with me in recognizing those great American families. Please. Thank you, you can be seated. Uh, in, in closing, I, I pass along one of the few things that has struck me from the many speeches that I've heard 
over my career and one of, from one of our great Army leaders. The medals we pin on our chest today and the words we use to describe what you have accomplished, they are important, but in the end, they are fleeting. Your true legacy is not what you see here today, before you today, but more the scores of lives that you have touched along the way. Go out and continue to build that legacy. Each and every one of you has passed a legacy that will long live past today. That legacy resides in the soldiers that you've trained and led, the children that you have helped raise, the nation you have served. You swore an oath to defend something greater than yourself on, on that first day of service, and your actions and legacy speak volumes. Truly a job well done. And we count ourselves as fortunate to have served with each and every one of you. So on behalf of a grateful state and nation, I want to thank you all once again, the families and soldiers for your service. We are your legacy and forever indebted to you for the service that you have rendered this great army and nation. Thank you all. And may God continue to bless each and every one of you. Thank you, sir. At this time, the color guard will perform a flag folding ceremony, a special tribute to Old Glory. The flag folding ceremony represents the same religious principles upon which our country was originally founded. The portion of the flag denoting honor is the canon of blue, containing the stars representing the states our veterans in uniform serve. The canton field of blue dresses from left to right and is inverted when draped as a pall on a casket of a veteran. In the armed forces of the United States, at the ceremony of retreat, the flag is lowered folded in a triangle fold and kept under watch throughout the night as a tribute to our nation's honored dead. The next morning it is brought out and at the ceremony of Reveille run aloft as a symbol of our belief in the resurrection of the body. The first fold of our flag is a symbol of life. The second fold is a symbol of our belief in the eternal life. The third fold is made in honor and remembrance of the veteran departing our ranks who gave a portion of life for the defense of our country to attain a peace throughout the world. The fourth fold represents our weaker nature, for as American citizens trusting in God, it is to Him we turn in times of peace as well as in, in times of war for divine guidance. The fifth fold is a tribute to our country, for in the words of Stephen the Cantor, our country, in dealing with other countries, may she always be right, but it is still our country, right or wrong. The sixth fold is for where our hearts lie. It is with our heart that we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The seventh fold is a tribute to our armed forces, for it is through the armed forces that we protect our country and our flag against all her enemies, whether they be found within or without the boundaries of our republic. The eighth fold is a tribute to the one who entered into the valley of the shadow of death, that we might see the light of day, and to honor mother for whom it flies on Mother's Day. 
The ninefold is a tribute to womanhood, for it has been through their faith, love, loyalty, and devotion that the character of the men and women who have made this country great has been molded. The tenfold is a tribute to Father, for he too has given his sons and daughters for the defense of our country since they were first born. The eleventhfold in the eyes of a Hebrew citizen represents the lower portion of the seal of King David and King Solomon and glorifies in their eyes the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The twelfthfold in the eyes of a Christian citizen represents an emblem of eternity and glorifies in their eyes God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. After the last fold, the stars were uppermost, reminding us of our national motto, In God We Trust. is completely folded and tucked in. It takes on the appearance of a cocked hat, which reminds us of the soldiers who served under General George Washington and the sailors and marines who served under Captain John Paul Jones. They were followed by their comrades and shipmates in the armed forces of the United States, preserving for us the rights, privileges, and freedoms we enjoy today. Today, we pay special tribute to 10 service members upon their retirements. The retirement ceremony is an old and time-honored custom. In days gone by, when a soldier retired, their entire regiment turned out to honor them with a farewell review, and the West Virginia Army National Guard continues many of these customs today. Now taking their place on stage are the reviewing officer and command sergeant major for today's ceremony, Brigadier General Murray Holt and Command Sergeant Major Chad Moneypenny. Applause at the very end. We'll have a big round of applause for everybody at the end. Now approaching the stage is CW4 Daniel Latimer, his wife Bliss, and their three children, Joel, Knox, and Claire Elise. Mr. Latimer is being recognized for 29 years of service to our state and nation. He has been recommended for the Legion of Merit and is being presented with a retirement flag, a certificate of retirement from the Chief of Staff of the Army, a certificate of appreciation, a coin, and a Soldier for Life lapel pin for his faithful service to the, to the nation and the United States Army. A certificate of appreciation is being presented to Mrs. Latimer for generous, loyal, and dedicated service made possible her husband's lasting contribution to the nation. After his retirement, Mr. Latimer plans to work as an academic and simulation instructor for Flight Safety International.
on behalf of a grateful state and nation, we salute you for your honorable and faithful service. Now approaching the stage is Sergeant Major Jeffrey Lee and his wife, Catherine. Sergeant Major Lee has been recognized for his 32 years of service to our state and nation. He has been recommended for the Legion of Merit and has been presented a retirement flag, a certificate of retirement from the Chief of Staff of the Army, a certificate of appreciation, a coin, and a soldier for life lapel pin for his faithful service to the nation and the United States Army. A certificate of appreciation is also being presented to Mrs. Lee for generous, loyal, and dedicated service made possible for husband's lasting contribution to the nation. After his retirement, Sergeant Major Lee plans to work as a U.S. Defense and Intelligence Market Manager. state and nation, we salute you for your honorable and faithful service. Now approaching the stage is Sergeant First Class Randall Brotherton, his wife Pamela, and their son Hugh. Sergeant First Class Brotherton is being recognized for his 20 years of service to our state and nation. He has been recommended for the Meritorious Service Medal and is being presented a retirement flag, a certificate of retirement, from the Chief of Staff of the Army, a certificate of appreciation, a coin, and a soldier for life lapel pin for his faithful service to the nation and the United States Army. A certificate of appreciation is also being presented to Mrs. Brillerton for her generous, loyal, and dedicated service made possible for her husband's lasting contribution to the nation. And after his retirement, Sergeant First Class Brotherton plans to work part-time as an IT technician. state and nation, we salute you for your honorable and faithful service. Now approaching is Sergeant First Class, Chad Conley, his wife Sierra, and their son, Hudson. Sergeant First Class Conley is being recognized for his 25 years of service. To our state and nation, he has been recommended for the Meritorious Service Medal and has been presented a retirement flag, a certificate of appreciation from the Chief of Staff of the Army, a certificate of appreciation, a coin, and a soldier for life lapel pin for his faithful service to the nation and the United States Army. A certificate of appreciation is also being presented to Mrs. Conley for her generous, loyal, and dedicated service made possible for her husband's lasting contribution to the nation. After his retirement, Sergeant First Class Conley plans to spend more time with his family. state and nation, we salute you for your honorable and faithful service.
Now approaching is Sergeant First Class Susan Lycia and her husband Caesar, her mother Sandra and brother Chris. Sergeant First Class Lycia is being recognized for her 23 years of service to our state and nation. She has been recommended for the Meritorious Service Medal and is being presented with a retirement flag, certificate of appreciation from the Chief of Staff of the Army, a certificate of retirement, a coin, and a soldier for life with help him for her faithful service to the nation and the United States Army. A certificate of appreciation is also being presented to Mr. Lacia. His generous, loyal, and dedicated service made possible his wife's lasting contribution to the nation. After retirement, Sergeant First Class Lacia plans to work as a music teacher at Shepherdstown Elementary School and as a mission coordinator for the Sanctuary Mission Outreach in Martinsburg, West Virginia. state and nation, we salute you for your honorable and faithful service. Now approaching is Sergeant First Class William Reed, his wife Bobby, son Keith, daughter-in-law Jessica, and grandson Jordan. Sergeant First Class Reed is being recognized for his 27 years of service to our state and nation. He has been recommended for the Meritorious Service Medal and is being presented a retirement flag a certificate of retirement from the Chief of Staff of the Army, a certificate of appreciation, a coin, and a soldier for life lapel pin for his faithful service to the nation and the United States Army. A certificate of appreciation is also being presented to Mrs. Reed for generous, loyal, and dedicated service made possible for her husband's lasting contribution to the nation. After his retirement, Sergeant First Class Reed plans to work as a professional truck driver. We salute you for your honorable and faithful service. Now approaching is Sergeant First Class Gilbert Valdez. Sergeant First Class Valdez has been recognized for his 20 years of service to our state and nation. He has been recommended for the Meritorious Service Medal and has been presented a retirement flag, a certificate of retirement from the Chief of Staff of the Army, a certificate of appreciation, a coin, and a soldier for life lapel pin for his faithful service to the nation and the United States Army.
behalf of the grateful state and nation, we salute you for your honorable and faithful service. Now approaching is Staff Sergeant Joseph Johnson, his wife Mary, their four children, Justin, Joshua, Travis, Kimberly, and his mother, Rose McCartney. Staff Sergeant Johnson is being recognized for his 20 years of service to our state and nation. He has been recommended for the Army Accommodation Medal and is being presented a retirement flag, a cert certificate of retirement from the Chief of Staff of the Army, a certificate of appreciation, a coin, and a Soldier for Life lapel pin for his faithful service to the nation and the United States Army. A certificate of appreciation is presented, is presented to Mrs. Johnson for generous, loyal, and dedicated service made possible her husband's lasting contribution to the nation. After his retirement, Staff Sergeant Johnson plans to work in construction. We salute you for your honorable and faithful service. Now approaching is Staff Sergeant Corey Wilma. Staff Sergeant Wilma is being recognized for his 20 years of service to our state and nation. He has been recommended for the Meritorious Service Medal and has been presented a retirement flag, a certificate of retirement from the Chief of Staff of the Army, a certificate of appreciation, a coin, and a soldier for life lapel pin for his faithful service to the nation and the United States Army. After his retirement, Staff Sergeant Woolman plans to work as an equipment operator for the West Virginia Department of Highways. state and nation, we salute you for your honorable and faithful service. <coughs> now approaching is Sergeant Timothy Humphrey, his fiance Amanda, and their four children, Tabitha, Abigail, Azalea, and Jaden, also his father Thomas. Sergeant Humphrey is being recognized for his 20 years of service to our state and nation. He has been recommended for the Army Accommodation Medal and is being presented a retirement flag, a certificate of retirement from the Chief of Staff of the Army, a certificate of appreciation, a coin, and a soldier for life lapel pin for his faithful service to the nation and the United States Army. After his retirement, Sergeant Pumphrey plans to work for the West Virginia Department of Highways.
behalf of a grateful state and nation, we salute you for your honorable and faithful service. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and get a round of applause for all of our retirees and their loved ones and remain standing for the benefit. Ask your prayer with me one more time. God, again, we are thankful to be here to reflect on the gifts that you've given to this country through these soldiers, God, and their families as gifts to them for their support through the many, many years of their service to this great nation. God, going forward, I pray that you provide this comfort and peace to them. God, we know as anyone who wears this uniform will all take it off at some point and ultimately, God, our value and our worth are intrinsic because you've created us. So, that our, our worth and our value is not based on how much we're able to do or to produce, God, but because of you. So I pray this would be a season and time of, of families growing closer together. we got our parents and kids growing closer together, um, just being able to love and care for one another well. So again, we're thankful. God, we're thankful for this day, for this time, and just ask, again, your protection and your blessing going forward. We would pray and ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And now the Army song from the 249th Army Band. Stage while the 249th Army Band renders one last honor and plays Old Lang Syne. <laughs> 